about evolution, we generally think about the wonders of the natural world. But some scientists at the CSIRO are taking the principles of evolution and applying them to robotics. So yeah, evolution is what we take our inspiration from and really the notion of survival of the fittest and the, the examples that we see all around us in the natural world, you know, especially in Australia, we've got all kinds of weird and wonderful creatures over here. Evolution is all about an organism's ability to successfully adapt to an environment. But how do you get a robot to evolve? In the case of these uh, drones here, what we've got are um, a load of controllers, a population, if you will, of controllers. Uh, and these controllers are initially random, so they will be represented by some numbers, and the numbers will tell the robot how it should act. And by changing those numbers, we change how the robot acts. And so we have this population of different controllers and all of them are random, we test them out and we give them a notion of fitness. So we give them just a formula that says, you know, maybe if you're hovering really stably in this really nasty wind I'm, I'm throwing at you, uh, you're doing well, your fitness is high. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we take the highest fitness ones and we select them for uh, this kind of digital reproduction. So we might take parts of two good parents and cross them over, so some of the numbers from parent one, some of the numbers from parent two. And we can also do mutation, so we can slightly change some of those numbers. And what it does is it lets us search around this space of different behaviours. What about when we go to the body of the robot? This is something that we're calling design assist. So the idea is that the algorithm spits out good ideas and the human might take them and start riffing on them and it's like a collaborative uh, sort of creative project is what we're aiming for. We've really only been able to do this over the past few years because of uh, 3D printing. So, you know, we can now come up with this huge, diverse, sort of dizzying range of geometries and shapes for our robots as well. And here, for example, you can see a robot leg. This is, um, you know, we simulate these legs uh, in different types of environments. So we try and get them to minimize the energy the robot requires when walking with them. So if we go for this one, you can see this leg is evolved for uh, sand. It's automatically evolved itself a wide footprint to spread its load out so it doesn't start sinking. If we ask uh, a human to design a leg, they might come up with something, you know, they'd have a, a, an idea of what they were going to design anyway. But what this lets us do is we can use evolution, have a population of legs that are, you know, they're really looking into areas of a, a design space of possible legs that we haven't been able to achieve before. And with 3D printing, we can actually just print them out to make them a reality. Who knows? Maybe the next step in our own human evolution won't be within our own bodies, but with our further cooperation with robots.